Okay, don't get it twisted, folks. I am all about adding smart functionality to just about everything I can in my home, but maybe not everything needs to be connected. So is the Yale Smart Safe one of these devices that can do without its smarts? Let's get into it. Greetings, Internet. My name is Dustin, and this is My Home Kid Home. And here we look at the smart home with an Apple Home and accessibility focus. There are a lot of companies that make basically the same device with a slightly different design, but the exact same functionality. It's much less common to take that functionality and rework it into a completely new product, but that's exactly what Yale did with their HomeKit-enabled SmartSafe. But as I got to testing it, I couldn't help but ask myself if the added smart home capabilities were even necessary. And I won't make you wait, they are and they aren't. Now, before we get down and dirty as to why, you should know that Yale did provide me with a review unit, but that's as far as their input went, and they're seeing this video at the same time as you. As always, I left links for more information on the Yale Smart Safe in the description box just below that like button. So now let's pull it out of the box and look at some of its features. All right, let's break this thing down. The Yale Smart Safe is a laser cut anti price steel alloy cabinet safe. It offers a variety of access methods, including a mechanical double bitted key, a physical keypad, or app control through Yale's own app or HomeKit. Cracking open the safe, we find four organizational hooks on the inside of the door, as well as its battery compartment, which holds its four AA batteries and supposedly an instance of the HomeKit code. More on this in a minute. Thanks to the built-in LED, we can see that the inside has one non-adjustable but removable shelf and both it and the bottom are lined with felt mats. The only other real point to note here is that the safe comes with pre-drilled holes, a drill template, and anti-saw bolts for securing the safe to either a vertical or horizontal surface. Now, since it is a smart safe, in order to secure it without a key, we have to set it up in the app. So let's go ahead and do that. After downloading the Yale Access app and creating an account, to add a new device, we'll tap Set Up New Device, scan the Yale QR code, tap Start, make sure the device is installed, aka put in the batteries, tap Continue, tap Begin Setup, and then just let the app do its thing. Once it's done configuring itself, you'll add it to a home or create a new one, and then give it a name, which is oddly Front Door by default. Once it checks for firmware updates, which I was a little bummed that there weren't any, we have the option of adding it to HomeKit, which should have been a breeze, but this was the first of my not so pleasant experiences with the Yale SmartSafe. The HomeKit code is located on the inside of the door of the safe and in its packaging, but as far as I could tell anyway, in both cases, it's so close to the Yale QR code that I couldn't get the HomeKit code to scan no matter what I did. All right, let's have some hashtag real talk for a second. I am blind, which can make mundane tasks like scanning a QR code a slight challenge. But even with sighted help, we couldn't get the HomeKit code neither on the door nor on the manual to actually scan. So I ended up having to manually input the HomeKit code like some sort of Neanderthal. Needless to say, this is not an ideal experience and definitely something that Yale needs to address in future production runs. Unfortunately, this was not my only issue with this safe, but one thing I can say about the Yale Smart Safe is that it's built like a tank and will definitely protect your possessions, not entirely unlike ExpressVPN does with your internet browsing. Regardless of what it is you're using your internet connection for, you should be in charge of who sees it and ExpressVPN has your back here. With 256-bit AES encryption, DNS IPv6 leak protection, kill switch, split tunneling, and a strict no-log policy, ExpressVPN locks down your browsing whether at home or out and about on public networks. They've also got you covered on just about any device and with more than 500 servers in nearly 100 countries, you can check out content from all over the world. I've been protecting my own online surfing with ExpressVPN for years now and recommended it even before they became a partner. And now, as a My Home Kit Home viewer, you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by going to expressvpn.com slash myhomekithome. Lock down your internet browsing and unlock a world of streaming content with ExpressVPN. After finally getting the Yale Smart Safe set up in Apple Home, we get a pretty bare bones experience. As long as you have an Apple Home Hub like a HomePod within range of the Yale Smart Safe, you can lock and unlock it remotely without the Yale Connect Wi-Fi bridge, which is a definite plus. 
We can also lock and unlock the Yale Smart Safe as part of any scenes or automations, but that's really about it. We can't even see the current battery life, which seems like a no-brainer for something like a Smart Safe. By the way, in the event that you aren't able to replace the batteries before they die and you misplace the physical key, there are some 9 volt contact points below the keypad that should give you enough juice to unlock it and replace the AA batteries. This is a nifty little fail safe and I definitely appreciate it, but we shouldn't need it since supposedly we will get low battery notifications through the Yale Access app. I say supposedly because I haven't been testing it long enough to actually get those notifications, but when I do, I will definitely update the written article over at myhomekithome.com. So you'll want to keep the Yale Access app after setting it up, but not just for the notifications. It's where you can set up guest pin codes and this is actually really powerful. You can either just set up a personal pin code for someone else, or you can give them access to the app. You can also set up access schedules with days of the week and even times on those days that the person is allowed to access the safe. This feature is particularly useful in small business situations where maybe you have different employees who need to get into the safe, but maybe you don't want them to do that at just any time. Other than this, there's not really a whole lot going on with the Yale Access app but between the notifications and the guest schedules, this is not one that you'll want to get rid of. Now looking at this strong box itself, I really like its size. It's not too big or too small and it allows me to store important documents and maybe some other things that I want to keep secret. I also really like the hooks on the door, which is where I keep the physical keys for my other smart locks. It also has an LED so you can see what you've got inside and I can see this being really useful if you have the safe stored in a dark closet or cabinet. Now earlier I said that the Yale Smart Safe was built like a tank, but that's not entirely true. While it is constructed of alloy steel, it's not fire nor water resistant. I definitely don't think it's reasonable to expect the electronics to hold up underwater or when torched, but the safe itself definitely should, especially considering that these events are probably more likely than a home invasion and the premium price point that Yale's charging for its smarts, one of those being Siri, but we need to talk about that too. Like the vast majority of locks in Apple Home, the Yale Smart Safe connects over Bluetooth, which usually isn't an issue if you have a HomePod or Apple TV nearby, but Siri, or an app for that matter, isn't likely how you'll use this safe on a day-to-day -day basis. It just takes too long, and if you're there, using your PIN code is just way faster and more convenient for most people where using Siri or the app might come in handy is for people with motor or dexterity issues. The Yale Smart Safe features a physical push button keypad, which is fantastic for me as a blind dude, but you do have to press those buttons like you mean it. Regardless of how you unlock the safe though, it is spring loaded, which makes it really easy to open. But because of this, you will need to hold the door shut when you lock it. I also want to point out here that the safe does provide audible feedback when putting in a code, entering a wrong code, engaging or disengaging the lock, and when putting in the batteries, but there doesn't seem to be any other way of confirming these inputs. Now, the Yale Access app is accessible and I was able to do everything I needed in order to set it up and control it, but it also commits some cardinal WCAG sins. While all of the text is actual text and not images, there's no semantic structure to it, which means that screen reader users have to go through all of the options in order to find what they're looking for. I was happy to see that the tab bar was labeled properly, but oddly, none of the actionable buttons in the app are actually labeled as buttons. This means that screen reader users will hear something like lock settings, but we have no idea if that's a heading or if it's something we can actually tap on. Since buttons aren't labeled as elements and there are no real headings, it takes a lot of trial and error in order to figure out what you're actually doing in the app. So yes, as a blind user, I was able to do everything I needed to do with this app, but it took a lot of time and can be easily avoided. So back to our original question, does your smart home need a smart safe? Well, the answer is yes it does, and maybe it doesn't. The Yale Smart Safe is very well built, but it does have some pretty significant chinks in its armor. On the smart side of things, the ability to create guest pin codes, set schedules for that access, and to see a log of who accessed the safe and when is enough for a lot of people to dive right in. But at least for my wife and I, we really didn't find ourselves using Siri or the app to interact with the safe on a day-to-day -day basis. 
It's definitely not one of those must have smart home devices, but if it fits your particular use case, you're going to find it extremely useful. Don't forget to check out our full written review on the blog and you'll find a link down in the description. If you have any questions about the Yale Smart Safe, ask away in the comment section. And if you got something out of today's video, let us know by dropping a like down below and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.